Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Finger. I'm the director of the New York Eye Cancer Center and the Eye Cancer Foundation. In these capacities, I welcome you to this presentation on the use of internet-based registries titled, There is Power in Numbers. Herein, I describe multi-center international collaboration in ophthalmic oncology. Internet-based, multi-center, international eye cancer registries received international attention at the first Eye Cancer Working Day. Sponsored by the Eye Cancer Foundation, this first-of-its-kind work meeting brought nearly 200 eye cancer specialists from around the world to discuss research projects and initiatives that required community participation. Dr. Lawrence Desjardins, kindly arranged for the Curie Institute to host the meeting. The lead discussion was on how tumor registries could be used to collect enough patient information for analysis, thus providing statistically significant medical evidence to answer previously unanswerable medical questions. Dr. E. Rand Simpson explained how registries could serve as a lighthouse in a storm of change. They could be used to validate staging systems, define and compare patient populations, measure treatment efficiency, and patient survival. Simpson explained how registries could shed light on those previously unanswered tough clinical questions. In practice, we all treat scores of patients each day. On occasion, we publish some unique single case or case series. These papers often include unique findings or the use of a new diagnostic or therapeutic technique. Whether one or hundreds of patients, these reports only provide unique perspectives and they rarely represent the entire world's experience. In fact, when each of us reports our single center data on a specific subject, most all the unrelated rare tumor patient data is lost to analysis. This is true for all centers around the world. The fact is we do not publish or share most of our patients' data. What we share is just the tip of the iceberg. Registries allow us to flip that iceberg. They allow us to store more information about each of our patients, plus add our patient information to that of other centers. Registries can be used to collect significant amounts of data that can be used to answer previously unanswerable questions, even on our rarest tumors. We all know the old adage, the wheels of progress grind exceedingly slow. But consider this, if one center contributes 40 patients per year to a registry, 100 patients will be provided in two and a half years. But if 10 centers contribute the same 40 patients per year, 1,000 patients' data can be analyzed to answer important medical questions over the same period of time. Clearly, multi-center international registries speed up the wheels of progress. So let's make a multi-center international online registry. First, you start with funding and project management. It is best to work with a department who has created prior registries, but if they are not available, at least you must have an internet technology department with a local project manager. They must be able to ensure both patient privacy and data safety. The next item is database field code construction. Database field code construction is a technical term for which questions, check boxes, and drop-down menus will be required to collect information. In my experience, there must be one person I call a champion who has a particular interest in the subject disease and is willing to form a committee who have published on and are thus familiar with the topic. That registry champion, perhaps with the help of others, also typically recruits participating physicians called principal investigators. From each center around the world, the principal investigator is in turn responsible for their local IRB and ethics approvals, as well as data collection, all termed implementation. Registries are long-term projects. Be patient. 
a year or more may be required for all the data to be entered and the data set to be complete. Data exporting and scientific query involves statistical analysis, writing, peer review, and publication. The process of writing and publication are the fruits of our labor. The answers to our questions become clear as the manuscripts become together. This involves a process where a writing committee creates a manuscript which is subsequently read and critically reviewed by each and every participating physician. With the AJCC Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force registries, the order of authorship was reflective of the work performed and often measured by the numbers of patients entered. So what do we mean by the power of numbers? Registries collect and thus offer the large numbers of rare eye tumors needed to validate our staging systems, predict mortality, ocular prognosis, and treatment side effects. It is important to note that unlike single-center studies, multi-center analyses are less affected by single-center selection and treatment bias, and thus offer real-world answers to our clinical questions. Lastly, we all know that medical resources are increasingly allocated based on medical evidence that can only be provided by analysis of large data sets. These facts underscore the importance of registries. This is important because staging systems have long been used in ophthalmic oncology. They include prognostic indicators for uveal melanoma metastasis, outcomes after radiation therapy for retinoblastoma, if plaque radiation was as safe as a nucleation, response to chemotherapy for retinoblastoma, likelihood of vision loss to radiation retinopathy, treatment of rhabdomyosarcoma, as well as mortality and globe salvage for a multitude of eye cancers. But few staging systems have been tested using real-world data from a multi-center international registry. Validation is important because it leads to world acceptance. What we have seen is that the societies and peer-reviewed journals have taken a leadership role making staging part of their standards. Eye cancer specialists, radiation oncologists, and research scientists have incorporated staging into their daily practice. Acceptance led to improvements in both clinical care and research communication. So far, several multi-center international registries have tested the American Joint Committee on Cancer's AJCC eye cancer classifications. For example, AJCC staging has proved capable of predicting mortality for conjunctival and uveal melanoma. The retinoblastoma staging system was found to predict both mortality and globe salvage. Under the leadership of Beta Ismaili at MD Anderson, their registry found AJCC staging was valuable to predict mortality for lacrimal gland carcinoma and ocular squamous carcinoma. In addition, led by Dr. Stefan Higard, the Denmark-based Ocular Adnexal Lymphoma Registry found histopathologic subtype was more important than the AJCC location-based staging system. As you see on this slide, the Denmark-based registry analysis on ocular adnexal lymphoma yielded four publications about the effects of tumor location. Here we see the Denmark-based registry data analysis yielded four additional publications on ocular adnexal lymphoma characteristics by tumor cell type. The MD Anderson-based registry data analysis examined a variety of eyelid carcinomas including squamous and sebaceous subtypes as well as aspects of conjunctival melanoma. Most recently, the MD Anderson Registry was used to analyze orbital sarcoma, lacrimal gland carcinoma, and the treatment of conjunctival squamous carcinoma. Some of the clinical questions answered by the Danish registry included that histopathologic subtype was found to be more predictive of mortality than ocular agnexal tumor location. That is, malt or mucosal-associated lymphoid tumor patients did better than most with follicular lymphoma, 
which is in turn better than large B-cell and then mantle cell lymphoma. They found that most patients treated with definitive low-dose orbital radiation therapy were associated with less subsequent systemic disease. Follicular cell was more common in female patients, while mantle cell was more common in males. In summary, the MD Anderson registry was used to validate AJCC staging of lacrimal gland carcinoma, eyelid and periocular squamous carcinoma, as well as orbital sarcoma. It was used to determine prognostic factors for occurrence and death from conjunctival squamous carcinoma, lacrimal gland carcinoma, and sebaceous carcinoma. The AJCC Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force Registry also answered important clinical questions. It not only validated AJCC staging of choroidal melanoma, but also found that failure of initial local control carried a 6.3 times hazard for metastatic disease. Most recently, this data set was used to describe patients who present with stage 4 metastatic uveal melanoma. These patients were found to have extra hepatic sites of metastatic disease best revealed by total body PET-CT staging. The OOTF retinoblastoma registry compared the 8th edition AJCC TNM8 staging system to the CHLA and WEH systems and found that the AJCC predicted both mortality and globe salvage. It is important to note that the AJCC was the only system created to predict mortality, including both intraocular and extraocular disease. Most recently, this data set was used to look at the impact of local and diffuse retinoblastoma seeds on AJCC staging. The OOTF also looked at conjunctival melanoma and validated AJCC staging and examined the worldwide practice patterns of treatment. Through history, scientific reporting has evolved from descriptions of empiric experience to scientific analysis of single-center data. Here we see that multi-center retrospective data sharing can be used to accumulate larger numbers of patients for statistical analysis for medical evidence. The next logical steps are real-time reporting of doctors' outcomes and prospective multi-center data sharing. Prospective multi-center data sharing will allow for the largest numbers of patients for analysis. In fact, electronic medical record-based data sharing will allow for the greatest numbers of data fields and thus the greatest potential for discovery. It will allow for time-sensitive, specific outcome analysis. It can be used to limit damage from poor methods of diagnosis and treatment. It will drive development of artificial intelligence and machine learning, but most importantly, it will improve the quality of care for the benefit of our eye cancer patients. The registries mentioned in this talk were supported and funded by the following foundations. It's important to thank them. In addition, I'd like to thank the Eye Cancer Foundation for supporting working days and international multicenter cooperative research. Thank you for your attention.